This ad is the victory cry of Prego spaghetti sauce after a simmering six-year stint in court with ragu. For years, we've been proving Prego is thicker than ragu old world style. So they took us to court. They challenged our right to show you the difference. We made our case stand, just like our breadstick. Prego, homemade taste, it's in there. The fight between the two companies began in 1988. According to the Wall Street Journal, Ragu accused Prego of misleading advertising. It said that Prego ads claimed Prego products were thicker than Ragu products. Ragu said that was unfair because Prego used Ragu's thinnest sauce for the comparison, while neglecting to mention the thicker varieties available to consumers. The National Advertising Division of the Council of Better Business Bureaus disagreed with Ragu. The Ad Division ruled that Prego was entitled to select the target for its advertising without taking into account other Ragu varieties. It also substantiated the claim that Prego is thicker than Ragu old world style. This million dollar lawsuit isn't the first of its kind. Minute Maid squeezed Tropicana to a pulp over claims of fresh versus processed juice. Alpo sued Purina. Can puppy chow really reduce the incidence of hip disease in dogs? The court said, we don't think so. That claim cost Purina ten and a half million dollars. And Procter and & Gamble and Cheeseboro Ponds are not holding hands over this one. Each one thought their hand lotion softened the best. The court washed its hands of the whole thing. Nobody won that one. With me today is Dr. Audrey Gusky, professor of marketing at Duquesne University. And Dr. Gusky, how did this kind of advertising start? Who started it? Well, it started in the early 70s. The Federal Trade Commission realized that consumers needed more information to make more knowledgeable decisions. And so they took the ban off of comparative advertising. Oh, it was banned at one time? It was time. banned. The only network that allowed comparative ads was NBC. The other two networks banned it for many, mm -hmm. many years. So who uses it now? I mean, obviously, uh, we saw a few examples of people or co companies who use it. Who else uses Pretty it? Pretty much any company uses it. It. It's interesting because in the past it used to be just the second-hand brands, the lesser-known brands, and now, as you can see, a lot of the market leaders are also using comparative advertising, even though they usually don't start the battle. It's usually they're, they're underdogs that are starting the fight. Does it work? Interestingly, it does not work. Consumers are taken, uh, they, they just take offense to it. It's really guerrilla marketing in the worst sense, and it really gets to be ugly, and consumers don't like to have this name-calling type of situation. So in a sense, it's not more effective, it's not more persuasive, even though consumers do remember these advertising more so than a typical ad. And about one-third of all advertisement is this type of comparative well, advertising. Why would they do it then? It doesn't make any sense. Well, they're doing it, I believe they're doing it because it's a more macho image. They're trying to save their face with the other companies, and it, it's, it's in a sense saying that we're as good as you and if you're putting us down we're in turn gonna face battle and, and put you down as well. You way. better be darn sure because it's like you're scratching for a fight if you do that. Absolutely. You have to be very careful of lawsuits. Uh, as long as the information that you're giving is legitimate and authentic about your product and your competitors' products, it's legal. It's illegal in Europe uh, even oh, though they're really? trying to change that now. Yes. Hmm. Well, if, if it's legal here, can you uh, give me some examples of comparative advertisers? Yeah, you can think about, uh, we've talked about the Ragu and Prego, which are the biggies, and AT&T with the MCI, they, they're very famously known. But we've got Joe Camel, who is uh, comparing himself to the Marlboro guy. We've got co um, the film companies, uh, Conoco and Kodak, also comparing themselves. Locally, we have Latrobe. Uh, Rolling Rock, and they're trying to take battle against Samuel Adams, which is based in Boston. Well, I think some of those ads can be very confusing to consumers. If, for instance, the phone ads, I find them to be very confusing. Everybody has so many different programs, and they're comparing them on the air, and it's like, oh, right. Enough and already. in a way, as consumers, you don't know who to believe. But it's really advantageous for consumers in a way because you're getting a tremendous amount of information, and if you can absorb and get through all the clutter, it tends to be more, you know, give us more information and help us make better decisions. Okay. Well, thanks so much for joining us again today. Always it's always nice to. See you. And Stacy, you can start comparing those ads any day. All right, will do. Thank you.